What's up? Okay, whatever you do, put the tumbler with the ice and the lemonade or whatever else far away from the computer. It's far away. I'm going to have to try and find you an official Cinema PsyOp sippy cup for Matt PsyOp. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> It'll say, I'm a big boy. Yeah, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I give you shit, but hey, this happened when we were recording with Mark Ball and it was in studio and I knocked over a cup that had a lid put on it, but it was one of those ones that was like meant to have a straw go through and yeah. it started leaking out of the straw. Luckily for me, it was nowhere near my actual electronics, so this shit can happen. Happen, but you can attest to ever since that happened to me, I switched over to sealable bottles of some sort, whether yeah, it's my tanker or whatever. <laughs> and, and, you know, usually it's not a problem. And now I've, I've moved a longer table over. I have, a, I have a pretty small desk. It has enough room for this laptop, two monitors on it that I have on it. And then and that's really it. And it just I like just getting set up tonight. I knocked over like fucking collectible stuff I have on this desk around the monitors. All of it fell onto the floor because I was setting everything up. Yeah. So we need to uh, definitely get you some kind of a <laughs> sealable container then. Yeah. Well, now it's just on a long table, so it's it's far away from me, so I don't have to worry. But this is kind of like, yeah, like the sound port that you just plug headphones into, that's dead. I just now realized that it won't pick it up at all. But luckily, I have a USB headset, so plug that in, works fine. Cool. And is it recording at least? And now I am recording and everything's fine in three, two, one. Yeah, let's uh, let's fucking go. I'm I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the this... sooner we get through May, the better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the third week of May Mate. The third week. We are now over the hump, and here we go on the downward slope. God, time, Jesus Christ. <laughs> the following show will destroy your self worth with excessive expletives, overtly descriptive sexual deviance, and more desperation for external validation than any so called entertainment should ever be allowed. Two talentless losers who are about as insightful and provocative as a comatose jellyfish. Cinema Psyops. A tendency to deprave and corrupt those whose minds are open to such immoral influences and to whose hands a publication of this sort may fall. So if someone of a dirty bird gets hold of your stuff and it makes them a dirtier bird, then it's labeled obscene. Encouraging the lowest, most base, and animalistic of desires to all who will listen. Because we, as a society, have decided that the cinema psyops represents our base and vulgar impulses, and that acknowledging our use of it rattles our collective conscience. I was trying my best to make a positive impact in the lives of others, but secretly I was involved in a relationship that was taking over my life. Cinema Psyops. It was leaving me wounded and depressed, unable to even manage the relationships that mattered to me. Auditory vermin infesting every aspect of the human condition, spreading their filth and foul disease. The Black Plague Podcasting. Cinema Psyops with Court and Matt. Welcome to the 248th straight week of Cinema PsyOp. I'm Court. I am the host. You could say I am the host with the most, although that would be more Elvira's territory than mine, I suppose, because she is the hostess with the mostess. I'm just the guy that runs Barter Town and does all the editing and all the fucking technical work. And speaking of work of a technical nature, sitting all the way in the bunker back at his own house is Matt. You fucking hack. I'm the host with the most. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jesus. <laughs> I'm I'm the hack. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't go into how I rip off my entire personality from different things. Everyone expects that of me. You have to be the original one. Yeah, but out of 248 weeks straight of this show, how many of those weeks have you done the show production and editing and all the shit that I have to do? How oh, much I wasn't of- talking about you being a hack there. Uh-huh. Just saying host with the most. Well, I, you're, you're... I am. I am the host with the most beard in this fucking 
fucking show. I am the host with the most bald head in this show. Are you? Bald? No, I don't know. Now, now we might be tied on that one. I'm talking natural hair loss here. I think I still got you beat. On the natural, if I try yeah. to grow it out, yeah, it's, you, yeah, you still you have may. more than me. <laughs> you may. It'll be close. It's close though. It's getting closer to every day. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> yeah, I used to be the host with the most back hair, but then I was able to afford laser hair removal with a special plan that oh. I was able to get rid of it. So now that's gone, and you now oh. beat me in that area. Oh, I definitely beat you. I, I may have beaten you before the laser hair removal in that area. No, we had a competition before, and I won because I no. looked like I had a sweater when I took my shirt off. That's true. <laughs> I, I'm surprised we didn't try braiding it, but for both of ours, just to see how long the braid could get. We could make like a rat king with our back hair, and the entire yeah. audience just shut off the podcast right there. <laughs> and everyone thinks it's gross. <laughs> Speaking of gross, this week we're talking May Mate movie Zombie 3, which is yes. technically a Fulci film that Fulci was unable to complete due to health issues. Uh, basically, he had a stroke while making this film, and I'm going to blame the heat and the working conditions in the Philippines on that. Yeah, well, yeah, it looked like uh, a piece of shit out there, so. And I guess Bruno Mate was working second unit on this film because he was also shooting other stuff on other films, but he had a contract with the same people that Fulci basically entered a contract to make Zombie 3. And so Bruno Mate ended up finishing the film, and I guess, long story short, too late, uh, Fulci's... <laughs> Fulci, <laughs> fucking love clue. <laughs> Fulci's uh, return of the film was about 70 minutes, and the producers wanted more than that. So they were like, you know, this film doesn't suck enough. We need Claudio Fergassi and Bruno Mattei to come in here and suck this up. It's got to suck some more, man. It's got to suck way more. So they came in and chopped it down to 50 minutes. So they chopped out 20 minutes of stuff that Lucio Fulci made because I guess it doesn't move along fast enough for them or it wasn't enough like aliens at the time. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and then Bruno Mattei came in and shot about, he, he thinks about 40 minutes of the total film. So of the hour 34-ish, we're getting about 40-ish give or take minutes of Bruno Mattei and 50 minute give or take of Lucio Fulci and uh, I think while we're going through it it's going to be kind of fun to speculate who shot what because I think it's pretty obvious in some scenes and in others it's not so much interesting yeah I don't know if I'd be able to tell really so well this is the end of Fulci's career when he gave less fucks and was just trying to make films just to make films um, yeah. he still put out some pretty good stuff in this era I will submit that I know people will probably argue that's not the case but there are films that I enjoyed. It doesn't matter what they think to me. It's whether or not I enjoy them. So there's still stuff that's worthwhile in this era for Fulci that I still dig. But he was making a lot of direct-to-TV stuff and things like that around this particular time. And really, the Fulci that we all know and love, yeah, that's that's not going to be in this era. I mean, I will say this. Out of a lot of the Bruno Mattei films I've seen, this one was better. So somebody else must have been involved. Well, yeah, the stuff that is better is definitely Lucio Fulci. But I also feel like Mattei had to kind of up his game a little bit and then kind of come in and fix it up. Yeah, probably, maybe. I guess. He was like, oh, I guess it's not my own work. So he, he was thinking maybe he shouldn't fuck it all the way up. <laughs> well, what's really interesting, too, is I guess Claudio Fergassi's wife. I can't remember her name at right now, which just proves how misogynistic the film industry really is in this case. But I guess she had actually written the script and Fergassi had worked on it a little bit and he got all the credit for it for whatever reason. I don't know what for, but they always work together or they always write together in some way, shape or form. He and his wife, they're kind of a right team. And Fulci didn't like it. So he basically started ripping pages out of the script and coming up with his own ideas and trying to add a few things. And he wasn't happy with the film. So, I mean, maybe the stroke was real. Maybe he actually did have full fledged health issues. Or maybe he just pulled the chain on a movie that he knew was failing fast and just let somebody else slop up the mess. Fuck, man. Sometimes I think about pulling out a stroke. I, I could probably pull that off. <laughs> just get out of something that's supposed to be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's not going to help you in this day and age right now, because best case scenario, you get put into a hospital, even though you're fine, and then you catch something that will kill you. Yeah, then I get the COVID. Yeah, so that's not going to help anybody, not even you. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Jesus. Yeah. It's a rough time to be alive. Yeah, but I'm actually pretty excited to talk about this because you and I have a history with this film, and we're going to save that in the final thoughts section. All right. But that's that's kind of like, we'll we'll put that lead right there for folks to kind of wonder what's going on. But Matt and I have a history pre this podcast with this film. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's probably not what people are expecting or thinking it's going to be either. No, no, probably not. <laughs> I think it's I think it's a fun little story. It's not, you know, it's not a huge deal or anything, but I think it'll be a fun little story for everybody when they finally get to hear it. But first, they have to hear the Legion GoFundMe promo asking for help for all Legionnaires. I don't know how we're doing as far as donations go, but I know that there's been a few disbursements to help some folks that are in need. So you got to hit Bo up on that. But it's kind of a bigger scale, take a penny, leave a penny, where someone like yourself or myself who is working through this crisis and actually is still getting a steady paycheck can put in a little bit of money here and there to help someone out, just like Bo describes in the promo that you're about to hear. But uh, I just kind of wanted to give a little bit more of a push because I know that that actually has, in fact, helped at least one, if not more, Legionnaires that we were able to do this. So I'm still waiting for uh, my stimulation to come in from the government. But when it does, I'm going to give a little from that to, to help everybody out. Because like I said, I've been working through this. Hey, damn, you haven't been stimulated yet, huh? No, we uh, we haven't gotten stimulated here, but uh, we also haven't gotten any money back from taxes in a really long time either. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fuck it. Let's play the goddamn promo so we can move on with this fucking show. Let's fucking go. This is Bo from LegionPodcasts.com. Hey, it's been a crazy time. And when the world gets nuts, we're happy to offer some old fashioned podcast entertainment. But for some folks, getting a laugh out of a show isn't really helping these days. People who depend on tips in their bartending jobs or have been put on furlough with no pay till the worst of this coronavirus threat has passed. That's a tough spot. That's why we set up a GoFundMe for members of our community, a sort of grand scale take a penny, leave a penny. For people like myself, for whom the recent disruptions haven't kicked us out of work, well, we can drop a few of those extra pennies in the GoFundMe jar. For those who are directly affected by recent events, and find themselves looking for money to pay the electric bill or keep the water on, well, how about you give me a shout at bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Let me know the situation and what you need, and we'll do our best to make life a little easier. And you can find links to the GoFundMe on the front page of legionpodcasts.com, on our Facebook group page, or on Twitter at Legion Podcasts, where it's the pinned tweet. For those of you who are able, thanks in advance for chipping in. And members of our community who need a hand, hey, here we are. Remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and we're all going to get through this together. Legion isn't just a name, it's who we are. Thanks for listening to all the shows here on Legion Podcasts, and we'll talk to you soon. everybody be fucking cool the blu-ray came with the cd of the soundtrack and i kind of pulled some songs off of that just so we could have it for the discussions or in between we're gonna have the music so everybody be cool can you just be fucking cool for a minute everyone don't be a fucking narc it seems like everybody's being cool right i mean so far i mean snitches get fucking stitches am i right (laughs) you are definitely not wrong and they deservedly get stitches unfortunately matt the trailer in this was all just music from the movie anyway with a sizzle reel of uh, clips of things that happen in it and mm-hmm. no usable dialogue or anything really even saying the name of the film. Much like we get with May Matei. So this is three out of three movies that we didn't have a real usable trailer on. Well, that's par for the course for May Matei. <laughs> yeah, I even think I played one of them that wasn't usable just out of frustration last year. And I just said, fuck it this year with it because it was literally just the music and then some advanced tool user zombie action. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, May Matei's basically turned this whole show's attitude into, ah, fuck it, so let's just move on. <laughs> it really does, man. I mean, it destroys this place. Um, <laughs> like anyway. dumping a tumbler of lemonade on your fucking computer, it does. 
And f- f- Mamete is the equivalent of me, yes, dumping all the lemonade all over the laptop. That is, <laughs> yes. I'm you just, are not wrong. I'm just glad it survived it. Yes. All right. Zombie 3. So we start out with some doctors injecting a body with a green serum. You ever notice how whenever it's zombies, everything's green? I blame Reanimator because it looked an awful lot like the serum in Reanimator, and I'm thinking it, that's what they're it's referencing. A, it's a Reanimator, Reanimator to set the precedent, I think, for everything. Well, and also uh, green glowing fluid just looks unnatural and weird. It shows up on film well, and I think it's just a cool aesthetic. It either causes zombies or ninja turtles. It's one of the two. It's <laughs> never anything else. It turns one thing into another thing. Sometimes for the good, like a ninja yeah. turtle. Sometimes yeah. for the bad, like a Matei zombie. That's true. So anyway, um, as the body and the face start to degenerate into like mush uh, and goo and horribleness, and then it pops up and it shatters out of its glass case. So uh, the doctor, then we cut to the doctor who was in there, the scientist, uh, calling up and telling the general that it seems to uh, be... He says a failure. De- he calls it death one, right? Yeah, that is the name of yeah. whatever the serum or yes. virus or whatever the fuck it is they're fooling around. I-, I can't I can't remember if he says it's a a failure or something, but he says it's bad and he's possibly having to quit the, the project. And then someone says that they will be on their way to collect the specimen. Uh, so then we cut to they're carrying the case out to a helicopter pad and a group steals it. Uh, even with the helicopter and other guards shooting, only one actually gets away somehow. As he's running through the jungle, one of the helicopter pilot or one of the guys on the helicopter is able to shoot his hand, and he drops the cakes, and it cracks open. As he tries to grab it, some of the green shit gets into his wound, it hurts him, and he runs away. I just uh, want to point something out here. There was a film made several years ago, but several years after this flick, that is called Bio Zombie, and something extremely similar to this happened, where um, they have a serum that they're actually importing from, like, Iraq or something like that, and it's almost the same kind of an intro where a zombie goes nut, and they're trying to deal with it, and then someone deals that vial, and then I won't say how it happens, but someone basically gets force-fed the serum that turned them into a zombie, and it just goes crazy from there. Uh, BioZombie's so, awesome. Everybody should check it out if they haven't seen it. So are, you, are you telling me someone stole from Matei? No, I don't think someone stole from Matei. I think that someone is working around the same ideas that Matei came up with for the intro here because he claims that he shot all of this intro stuff. He also claims that all the stuff with the soldiers in the white outfits is what he shot so oh, okay. far. So all the stuff at the intro here with the action and just the, there's not really a plot. There's just like endless scenes of people running from each other or, you know, someone dealing with goop or, or some kind of infection from this thing. It's very similar to what happens in BioZombie and also the way that the cheap effects for the zombies make up for the fact that they're cheap effects by having more postulates and weird open wounds that are even grosser than your average zombie makeup. I mean, it all looks super fake but they also tried to make it extra gross cover that up. Yes. So then the guy, injured, runs into resort and gets a room. So then we cut away and the army officials, they land at, the med- at this lab center and And that is our first clip. One thing is for sure. The Death One compound is far more dangerous than any of us ever imagined. The military consider it an extremely powerful bacteriological weapon. Gentlemen, please. We'd like to be alone with Dr. Holden and his assistant. Do as he says. We found the container. A few miles from here. It was open. The file containing the liquid was broken. Hmm. There should be no danger. The virus is extremely sensitive to oxygen and dissolves in less than 30 seconds after diffusion. But the man who stole it is contaminated. There were traces of blood all around. Strange colored blood. Damn it! A contaminated man, of course, can infect other persons through breath, saliva, blood, and any other kind of body-to-body transmission. You have to get this man before it's too late. Don't worry. We'll take care of it. We'll scour the whole area. A man in his condition can't get very far. 
Anyway, we're back at the resort, and a bellboy gets told he needs to go drop water off to the new guy in the room. He's annoyed by it, because this guy's been asking for water constantly. So, as he heads in the room, drops off more water, he picks up some of the empty glasses. As he's leaving, a maid runs into him, and the glass breaks, cutting his hand. Um, and then we cut back into the room, and the thief guy is obviously getting ready to turn. He says he has to do this, and he cuts off his own hand. Um, then the maid comes in as she wants to clean his room, because the bow boy said it smelled like something died in there, and she is attacked. Then the army comes in, uh, and they start breaking into the resort. Uh, the bellboy, we can see, is already starting to get sick. Uh, the army finds the maid dead. She's, like, stabbed into the wall. So these are, obviously, uh, uh, tool-using zombies, so. We definitely need to talk about the way the infection vectors are happening in this film. Yeah. It looks as though it's some type of bloodborne pathogen where it has to get inside the body through a cut or, I guess, um, like a blood splatters the mouth or something like that. So it's not an airborne infection kind of thing. But the way that they come up with this, where his saliva and various other fluids were on the glasses from all the water he's chugging. The bellboy guy gets cut with it. Then you actually see the infection in the cut. And like I said, the effects are a little rudimentary, but they go overboard with the grossness to try and make up for the fact that they don't really look that realistic. Um, the attack where he chops off his own hand and then the maid comes in and he goes after her advanced tool user zombie style was actually pretty entertaining. And at this point, when you get up to about when the military shows up in the white suit, you're already actually kind of having fun, even though you can tell that this is a really cheaply made movie and you're a little disappointed in that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when it carries the name zombie, y y you gives you thoughts back to uh, a better time for that film franchise. But <laughs> if you can let go of that, if you if you can just get someone who's seen it before, before it's your first time watching it, or just listen to this show, obviously, and just understand that if you can just have fun with it, this is not a bad movie. And I, yeah, I don't mind the effects. Yeah, rudimentary, but they, they gross them up a bit so that it's helpful. You know, well, the zombie franchise itself that started with Lucio Fulci's film Zombie is a ripoff franchise from the very get go. Zombie was originally Zombie 2, which was meant to be a sequel to Dawn of the Dead, which was released as Zombie in yeah. Italy. Um, yeah, no, but I'm just saying, like, the original zombie film, which, yes, yeah, Zombie 2, yeah. is a fucking excellent film. It's a fucking masterpiece zombie film, and I'll yeah. fight anyone who tries to tell me otherwise. Uh, you don't have to fight me because you know how I feel about it. it and it has, it has the thing that makes me cringe the most. Okay, so they find the maid dead. She's stabbed through. And then they find our zombie guy who's just kind of sitting in the chair, almost too decomposed, it appears to move. Uh, then the army just decides they're going to kill everyone in the whole resort and dig a mass grave for him. This they was really, really hard to watch this time. Like, yeah. knowing that there are mass graves and there are people dressed exactly the same dealing with infections, this yeah. really hit home and felt pretty sad, man. Yeah, yeah. when you know that that shit's happening uh, uh, around the world right now, it makes it, uh, makes it different, a, a different watch. Yeah. Um, it really rings home to see mass graves whenever it's not just something that happened 20, 40, 50, 60 years ago or whatever. It's something that's going on right now. And it's not you something you read in a history book, but it's something you're seeing live on TV or at, on the internet. As you become a major part of history and something that will be remembered for years to come. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I thought I, we had, I really, it, it, it's so weird when you say that, not to get off the subject too much. You think you, you live through 9 11 and you think, that's going to be the one thing I'll always remember. That'll be the one thing that, you know, like our parents had the Kennedy assassination. You know, others had um, uh, the, the bombing of Pearl Harbor, uh, the first drop of a nuke. You know, the World War II generation had a lot more holy shit lifetime moments than a lot of people. I literally thought 9-11 was going to be ours. And now this is probably going to be another one. So fucking... If you live long enough, uh, more people are dying per day than died in 9-11. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and that's what I'm saying. It's just I'm saying 9-11 was the first one where you're kind of like, I don't think anything can get bigger than this in my lifetime. And then, you know, how wrong one can be, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> yeah. Enough depressing shit. Now let's talk about zombies yeah, taking over the world. <laughs> yeah. Let's get back into this. Uh, anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyway, then they decide to burn the the original zombie guy. But the doctor is nervous about ash that might fall back to the ground and infect more people. Did this come uh, out before or after Return of bef- the Living Dead? It came out before. Okay. The reason I that think. I the, the reason because that I it's the that. same fucking thing, dude. Yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking. And I I say in in the movie or when I was watching the movie, taking notes. I even noted, I was like, huh, this seems in the scene that's coming up oddly familiar. I I didn't check, though, but I want to say that Zombie 3 uh, came out because I was like, holy shit. 88 for Uh, Zombie 3. I think that Return of the Living Dead was before it. Yeah, I think Return of the Living Dead came out in 87. For some reason, this seems shot way before 1988. That's why I was like, (laughs) Return of the Living Dead seemed way newer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I for think lack of a better word, I think the film stock. Um, so eighty five and eighty eight. So yeah, he's definitely borrowing. Okay, so, from, okay, so yeah. But the idea that they're doing here, where what he's borrowing, is actually a really good idea. And the way that he does it isn't we're burning it in a crematorium. It's mixing with the clouds and the smoke. What they're basically saying is you're making particles and you're dispersing the same thing out and you're infecting other people with it. And since this is a biological thing and it apparently doesn't burn, I'm gonna let it go. And I think it's actually more of an homage thing. It's not a straight yeah. up ripoff. He actually changed it enough to I make s- it a wink or a nod. I agree. Yeah, it doesn't make a, it doesn't make like a thunderstorm somehow that causes rain that causes bodies in the ground to come up you that, know that causes 45 grave to ask everyone if they want to party because it's party time yeah and somehow give uh the dead the superhuman strength to climb through six feet of dirt if they're even nothing but skulls but let's just move on from that the uh, ground was reanimated too so it was coming alive all of that is living screaming flesh begging for brains fucking man jesus all right <laughs> anyway there and you go. as the yeah, the doctor has fears are realized when birds start flying through the ash. Well, we cut to a cool DJ who's going to be really important, and it's not really what he's about to say isn't really important to the movie, but anytime the DJ talks, it's kind of cool. So that's our next clip. Brothers and sisters on this hot and sunny day, this is Blue Hot welcoming you to our beautiful bay. I can't see the traffic, but I can hear it say, you're going to have to cool down. There's lots of shucking and jiving all along. Along the way, everybody's heading for the country. Nature lovers, that's what we're all becoming as we realize the cities are killing us with pollution and stress. Scientists can do what they want with our world because we believe what the scientists tell us. And what they tell us is that there are only a few small traces of pollution left in the upper atmosphere. There is no danger to man. And if the danger is gone, so is the fear. Now dig this hot new number. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Everything he just said there is not the sort of thing that you would hear a DJ actually say. You know, like, he's he's talking all this stuff about how we should listen to scientists. Nobody talks yeah. like that now, at all. No, no. I mean, no. I'm saying it, but I'm not a DJ. And I know Werewolf Man Jack, who basically is Blue Host after he left this gig, um, you know, is all a proponent for science and learning and all of that, too. But, I mean, this just doesn't ring right. I mean, is he FM or AM? Because he sounds a lot more FM, if you catch my drift, than AM. He's definitely FM, but he gets to talk. <laughs> it's like a morning show, only in the afternoon. It's an afternoon drive. Time. Uh, <laughs> kind of, but he's way too hip and like with it and knowing what's going on. He knows what's hip. up with what's going down. He's hip. <laughs> he's with it. He's watched MTV. <laughs> He knows what the kids are into. He's on the Instagram and the facey spaces. That's right. He does the chat snaps. And um, uh, (laughs) so anyway, while we're listening to him, we see three army dudes. They apparently are on leave and they're getting ready to have a good time. Uh, And as they're driving, they see an RV that's full of ladies and the ladies are flirting with the army guys. So um, they, they, uh, they seem to be, you know, everyone wants to have a good time. Uh, <laughs> this stuff feels like it was all shot by Fulci. Yeah, kind of. Well, um, it features the main actors that are in a good percentage of the film. So all the stuff in the um, the camper, all the stuff with the people with the camper, excluding whenever a pair of folks go off away from the rest of them. It's all basically Fulci as far as I can tell and as far as I can see. 
and these army guys act more like faulty characters anyway and the girls in the film i wouldn't say that they're acting more like faulty characters but it fits or tracks with Fulci's view on humanity the way that their sexuality they're very open about it and they're just teasing the guys and getting off on the fact that the guys are into them and this just feels more Fulci than Matei. well then uh we cut to a nice couple out for a drive and they see a shit ton of dead birds on the road uh they go to check it out and one of their birds flies up and attacks the guy's face of the couple and they escape and drive away they take uh, this movie and turn it into zombie five by the way this this whole sequence here is the whole impetus of zombie five jesus christ like didn't we just do this in zombie three <laughs> <laughs> yes they did it in zombie three but their idea is well it worked in zombie three maybe we can stretch it out to an entire movie of course so at the um the at the same time the birds then attack the rv uh the army guys go to help but one of the ladies has been hurt and she's got her face fucked up pretty good so they decide there's a resort right up the road and they're gonna head to it uh we cut back to the couple who are driving and the woman's name's patricia and they drive and of course her boyfriend's not feeling well so he goes to uh she goes at a gas station to look for water um and the dude's sores are starting to burst with blood and green shit. So one of the signs of this specific viral infection is a craving for water. You don't become hydrophobic. You become hydrophiliac, yes. <laughs> hydronetic? Uh, anyway, hydronet it? I, I, don't, so... I don't know exactly. It's almost like they get some kind of weird pleasure out of chucking water. Like it's like almost sexual. It's weird. They become an H2-aholic. Uh, so uh she goes in the gas station to get the water but is attacked by a zombie after some cat and mouse she's able to light the zombie on fire and run away and he the zombie blows up the gas station and itself uh we cut back to the scientists getting all sorts of readings and that is our next clip we must get this data to the lab as soon as we can have it examined properly this isn't radioactivity, this is something else. Norma, come on. We're gonna see General Morton. General Morton! Yeah, Our yeah, instruments have detected an enormous radioactive cloud in the air. That's not the worst of it. There have been numerous incidents of inexplicable violence reported throughout the area. Murders and people are eating each other. Death one. We have to cut off the epidemic area. Cut it off? How? By continuing to kill thousands of innocent victims? You got a better idea? Yeah, of course. We are already working on studying an antidote for what, in my belief, is a virus. We're looking for an element which will enable us to stop this virus from reproducing. Fine. In the meantime, we'll do things our way. General Morton, when you asked us to work on Death One, you should have told us about the risks involved. We didn't know ourselves. You're the scientists, the brains. We're just simple soldiers, and we act as such. Coleman, Chase, sir. Get the anti-contamination squad ready and put all units on red alert. Yes, sir. General, if you are going to... Dr. Holder, if you're going to find that antidote, do it quickly. I can't afford to wait for you. <laughs> what a douche. <laughs> yeah, man. What a di I mean, when you're wrong on such a massive scale, and he's just doubling down on being more wrong. Yeah, it's so unrealistic. No one in charge would ever, ever just double down on all their stupid shit just because they feel like they're right and everybody else is wrong and go with their gut. I, I, I can't even fucking do this. It's just too pathetic. <laughs> they, yeah, I mean, no one, after making such a colossal fuck up, would double down and keep doing fucked up shit just because they can't admit they were wrong the first oh fuck it yep jesus christ all right so anyway uh the group gets the resort and it seems to be in disarray and deserted yeah it's basically just one giant shithole so it's not really much yeah. of a resort man it, i mean it turned to a shithole real quick too one of the army guys uh goes to investigate the upstairs as he's going up he sees this boarded up room and can hear moaning before he can investigate in a green light coming from there so again 
Uh, before he can investigate any further, another army dude shows up and says he found a crate of guns. Then we cut back downstairs, and uh, one of the girls, Carol, and another one of the GI's, Bo, they decide to go looking for a doctor. So the rest decide to go up to the second floor with the guns, while the other two take a jeep to go look for, to go see if they can get a doctor. Uh, while driving, Bo and uh, Carol flirt a bit, and then we cut to the top army guy, asshole he decides to give orders to shoot everyone in the zone zombie or not yeah so at, also doubling down on stupidity yeah exactly uh as Bo and carol are driving uh they see no one is out in one of the towns it's very quiet however we can see a zombie hand in the background um the jeep breaks down because it overheats and carol goes looking for some water as she's looking around a Z pushes her out of the top of the hotel into the water. Bo sees this and jumps in and rescues her and pulls her out, only for us to see that her entire lower half has been devoured. And then she starts attacking him, having turned into a zombie. This has got to be all Fulci. It's well done. It's yeah. way too well done to not be. Exactly. Uh, Bo fights her off and then through a large horde as he keeps moving through everything. There just seems to be zombies everywhere, uh, giving you that enclosed feeling. So that's pretty fucking cool. Again, all got to be Fulci. It's really well executed. Yes, the makeup is not that great, but the zombie movements are excellent and they don't act like they're on super crack, although it's a little jumpy and they do move a lot quicker. But they do that for jump scare factor, which even Romero was yeah, it's guilty like, of. It's almost like... um. Uh, in Harry Potter to the Chocolate Frogs, all these zombies have one good jump in them, and then they start moving slowly. Yeah. They can jump out, and then they, it's like, that's all they had in them, and then now they moved all fuck up. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so anyway, he is able to fight off the horde, and he escapes. Um, we cut to DJ, uh, DJ Easy Nuts there announcing, uh, some, uh, updates from, uh, uh announcing updates from the government. And we get, uh, images of all our white suited people, uh, shooting zombies. And that is our next clip. This is Blue Heart. We're interrupting our music program to make an important announcement to all our listeners. Something serious is happening in this part of the world, something extremely unpleasant. We've been getting a constant stream of phone calls. There is a wave of incredible violence sweeping the country. Murders, rape, whole families wiped out in their homes. Men, women, and children of all ages are sharing the same fate. The dead are rising up again, murdering their own friends and relatives. Then they eat the bodies. The military authorities assure us that the situation is under control. However, we would like to list for you the hospitals and police stations which are in condition to help you. Also places where the desperate can take refuge when their homes are no longer safe. Here is Vince Raven to read the list for you. So we get more photos of army guys and Z's fighting after this. And then uh, Bo uh, runs right into Patricia and her man in the car. They decide to head to the closest hospital. Cut back to the hotel, and the girl who was attacked by the birds dies. Uh, so then we cut back to Blue Heart, and he's announcing that no one is to leave their home and to stay out of the danger zones. So, you know, stay out of the highway to the danger zone, folks. Yeah, do not listen to Kenny Loggins. Don't go no. right into the danger zone. Stay away from the danger you zone. Get, you get, you get to stay away from that man or else you know everything's gonna be way messed up for you <laughs> you're not gonna have a good time not at all back at the resort a couple decides to go looking for food um as the guy opens up the refrigerator he is attacked by a flying zombie head that's right a flying zombie head this was fulci's idea and he was super proud of it and yeah it's a little silly yeah it's kind of goofball but uh it was kind of funny i th right. i think it used its jaw to propel itself and then it just kept flying around with the jaw the zombie head rips out the guy's throat and the girl is then attacked and killed by what i'm assuming is the zombie's body as it rips out her throat with its hands. I look like it had a head, but I think that's what it was supposed to be, that somebody cut off the zombie's head. And this also made me think of Return of the Living Dead in that the one zombie that gets the head knocked off still keeps going after people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a big thing in Return of the Living Dead is, like, they can get cut in half and the legs will still be moving. Right. But I don't know if that was Fulci's intention or if it just was something like, well, it's reanimated dead, so maybe it's part. We also have reanimated where whole parts can be reanimated and then function together, but the body fumbles around when the brain can't control it. <laughs> True. 
Uh, while driving, Patricia's boyfriend says he's feeling better, but now he needs a drink of her blood and turns and attacks her and Bo. Uh, she stops the car and when she jumps out, she hurts her leg, uh, but she starts limping away as Bo is fighting uh, off the boyfriend and then is attacked by other zombies and is killed. Uh, Patricia is pretty much surrounded, so she has to jump off the bridge into the water below. Back at the resort, two of the GIs are standing watch and talk about how they can hear moaning and feel like they're being watched from the jungle um inside the resort we see the one girl is now undead and has already killed one of her friends and then starts attacking nancy her uh, other friend who was sleeping but nancy's able to fling her out the window so like we're not even a full halfway through this film and most of our cast is already gone yeah everyone's uh, yeah, i'm sad that the one girl got killed off camera you could have given us some time <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love the way that this sequence moves forward, and I really feel like the 70-minute cut that Fulci would have delivered might have been worthwhile, and I wish we could see that cut. Yeah, right. I, um, I feel like I would have actually really enjoyed it, because like I said, even though everything's real cheap and made on the cheap, you and I are both forgiving of that if it's still entertaining, and these sections have all been very entertaining, and even though they move quickly, like a bunch of vignettes that don't really fall together, this is just where these folks ended up, and then they all die, like, instantly, because these zombies are off the chain. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the RV lights come on, and we see Patricia comes out, and as they're getting her into the resort, they see more zombies are now just standing there. They start to barricade themselves in, but while they're barricading themselves in, the barricaded area inside the resort is starting to give. So they have zombies outside and inside, they just don't know about the inside ones yet. Well, they did spray the words, dead, don't, inside, open, sprayed yeah. on the doors. Who the fuck was doing this, man? Did you let the dyslexic person write this out god damn it hey that's offensive oh uh, okay <laughs> i mean not really but all right <laughs> uh you just got your culture canceled on twitter dude was my was is, is my culture canceled now yeah not only is my culture not your fucking prom dress matt your culture is also canceled <laughs> listen my culture is a prom dress so how dare you <laughs> I would like to wear my culture as your prom dress. Listen, I'm wearing my culture to prom, so you have to cancel your dress, okay? <laughs> I'm confused. Are we arguing or being sarcastic? I I'm lost. I thought we were agreeing. I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> I'm so confused, Matt. What is Mamet Tate doing to us? Oh, good God almighty. It's making me want to actually study culture. Uh, culture. Cancel culture. <laughs> uh... So anyway, uh, we see some zombie hands start to break through the barricade that's inside the hotel. Then the Zs break through uh, the barricade from the outside of the hotel. And so everyone starts breaking through. And at one point, one of the guys has a flamethrower, so he sets them some zombies on fire. Uh, while falling back, one of the guys trips and falls and is totally torn apart by the zombie horde. All good stuff. I mean, I've got oh. no complaints at all other than the effects look nope. a little cheap, but I'm fine with that. Yep, I like I've uh, all good everything that's happening right now is good. Therefore, uh, the Fulci. Group, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the group escapes upstairs and fights more zombies. Then run. And then they jump off of the balcony and run away from the resort. Uh, it comes to now daytime, and as the group works their way through the jungle, they are uh, attacked by some zombies. And this is a weird sequence, because only one of the guys fights them off. It's like the rest of the group just let him do what he wanted. But as he fights off all the rest of the zombies, uh, he sees some canoes they can use to get across the river. I love how this guy's like multitasking. Not only is he kicking zombie ass and taking zombie names, he also is like, hey, look, there are some canoes. Perhaps if we jump into the water, they cannot pursue us because their makeup will wash off. Yeah, and don't worry, everyone. You don't have to help me. I'll just guess I'll deal with this myself, even though I'm the only one out of this entire group who's not armed at this point. I but don't worry. We're going to be fine. I love that we just turned this guy into a passive aggressive hero. Where he's like, no, I've got this. No, I don't need your help. Look at the way hey. I'm destroying all these zombies, even though you are all heavily armed. Hey, John, I'm coming to help. No, 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 that's fine. You guys apparently just sit over there. You have more important things to do, apparently. I'll handle this, I guess. Again. <laughs> he's like super passive aggressive about how he's <laughs> just... handling all this shit. 
You know what would be super helpful if you guys could maybe get off your asses and get to those canoes while I do everything else for you. Oh, oh you want me to? Oh, where are the canoes? I guess the right. I guess you want me to ride the canoes for you. Jesus. <laughs> you want me to walk these canoes up to you while I fend off the zombies? Sure, I guess I can do that, so you don't have to walk. It's like that uh, passive aggressive mom. You know, like I guess I'll just go ahead and vacuum while you guys are watching TV. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the hero Karen. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Back to the science nerds, and that is our next clip. I think we might have found something. At least we'll be able to put an end to this useless slaughter. Useless slaughter. What do you want me to do? Let the epidemic spread even further? It won't be your weapons that end this epidemic, but our antidote. My men cordoned off the epidemic area. By tomorrow, the situation will be under control. And what are you going to do with the bodies? Burn them again? Any living creature in the contaminated area is not going to get out alive. You can count on that, Dr. Holder. I really, really, really have a hard time watching the scientists and army guys arguing back and forth because it just hits way too close to home right now. Because you feel like that's what's happening right now. Well, yeah, the, the <laughs> military the military guy is basically Trump. He's like, why do I care if poor people are dying as long as it doesn't come near me or the billionaires that can afford to protect themselves? Let them eat coronavirus cake. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, so we have more images of army, the army killing more zombies. Uh, and then we see the group that's on the canoes cross the river. Uh, they rest and address Pat's injury as one of the guys chases a chicken so he can they can have some lunch. Um, it's able to get away from the kid. And then he looks up and there's army guys there and they blow him to bits. Then the two GIs respond by shooting back, and then they all run away. Uh, there's a helicopter in the air, and they are going to go ahead and hunt the four. I dig this. It reminds me a lot of George Romero's The Crazies a lot. Yeah, especially the white suits and the... Biomass, like, yeah. Yeah, biomass, yeah. A big time, yeah. It reminds me of the crazies, yeah. I'm thinking that because Matei said he shot all the stuff with the soldiers in the white suits, but I'm thinking that this is more of a Fulci thing, but our actual cast that we were normally seeing isn't involved in this, and there's white suits, so, I mean, he only, Matei only had, like, two of the cast that Fulci had in the original shoot, so it's kind of hard to tell, but it feels like this is actually Matei doing his job well, and this is actually really well directed and put together if this is his shot, so... So this is a toss-up. Is this Fulci? Is it Matei? I can't tell because this is Matei at his best if it is him. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this is not half bad stuff here. Yeah, I mean, for um, a hacky fucking director who even admits that he is in fact a hack, hey. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he did really well here. I got to give him some credit. Uh, the helicopter is going to land, but they have to kill some zombies first, and they do so. Um, and then we cut to the army meeting with the nerds, and that is our next clip. Well, gentlemen... I'm pleased to announce that we're about to leave you in peace. The laboratory is no longer in a state of emergency. The contaminated area has been surrounded. It's just a matter of hours. Before you leave, General Morton, I should like to inform you that the epidemic started with the burning of the body. Oh? The heat mutated the virus, made it resistant to oxygen, and let it escape. Go on. None of us, none of us in the center has been able to establish, with any degree of certainty, the perimeter of the contamination in the atmosphere. It would only take a rain shower, or some other simple climatic manifestation and the virus could start to spread again. Only this time, you would not be able to stop the virus simply by killing everybody who is infected with it. You're the scientist. Suggest something. <sighs> Only if we find an antidote, and we're very close, can we have a real margin of safety. We have to vaccinate everybody in this region and then spread the news to the rest of the world while there's still time. That's impossible. Our experiments on death one are top secret. And you know that perfectly well. 
They won't be top secret anymore when another epidemic breaks out. Who knows where? In Europe or the United States. Now you're talking science fiction. Death one brings the dead back to life. It makes them feed on human flesh. What do you call that, General? Science fiction? You created it. We worked on it. But now there is nobody who knows its true potential. Just what do you want? A press conference on the Army's use of bacteriological weapons? I don't want to bring about the end of humanity. Nice philosophical sentiment. But the truth of the matter is, the virus has been blocked by the course of action that we've taken. It's been a pleasure, gentlemen. Tracy, Janie. Holy fuck, that's got to be the conversations going on at the State Department right now. Oh, I mean, you know it is. Holy shit. That main scientist guy sounds like he's trying to force out words. I just... Uh. Like he's super stressed and constantly just trying to communicate. Meanwhile, the military guy's all like, well, Our course of action is the one that has cured everyone of this virus. We are doing the best job. We are saving the entire world. And he's like, you're bringing about the end of humanity. No, we're not. We're doing excellent work. All my rich friends are safe. <laughs> or worse yet, it's, are you bringing about the end of humanity? Nice sentiment. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> nice sentiment. I don't know what that word means. I hope I used it correctly. <laughs> oh, f- Jesus, it's depressing. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> the group finds an army installation, and the uh, girls find what appears to be an infected pregnant woman. Pat goes for help and is attacked. Then we cut back to the two GIs, and they're confronted by some other army guys, and they pretty much fight them all, beating the shit out of them. Then the woman, the pregnant woman, is starting to give birth, but a Z comes up behind Nancy and rips her face around, and then pushes her face down, and a hand bursts through this pregnant woman's stomach crushing nancy's face to death in a very gory bloody mess this has got to be fulci all of this yeah, has to be fulci there's no way that isn't yeah that is so fulci this is the sort of thing that i can see fulci grinning gleefully at the idea of and then frowning at the execution of this kind of scene <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it was it was grody. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it uh, is the highlight of the film for me. I remembered that sequence specifically when I saw that this was getting released to Blu-ray from Severn and was like, I have to have this. Yeah, right. Um, so uh, we see that it's Pat's dead boyfriend that is attacking her. And she is able to kill him by using a, a well, it's a fucking, a, it's a hoe, uh, for lack of a better word. It's like a shovel. So find one of those utilities things that uh, uh, you see a lot of military people have that's for numerous things. I think they call them tactical shovels because they can be used as a weapon as well. But yeah. They fold it's, up that, and they hide in a pack. You see them all the time in Vietnam movies was, being used. Yeah. I was going to call it a tactical hoe. I realized that the president's wife already has that title. Whoa! So, um... That is not far enough, sir. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, the we see GI shooting some more army guys in white. Uh, then they uh, they run around and they find Pat and then they look in and they see Nancy's fucking ripped apart body. Um, they decide to leave and are chased by more zombies. They are out of ammo, seemingly. Uh, surrounded, and they light a wall of fire, which buys them some time, Um, but then Pat finds a grenade. They blow up a building that clears a path to one of the helicopters. Kenny can actually fly a helicopter, so Ken and Pat get in. As the other GI was like, I'll cover you, I'll cover you, and really just stood there, waited for Kenny to actually take off to jump up and grab it, but then there are zombies hiding in piles of grass, and he is pulled and dragged down by the zombies. Um, the other Jay, he's he's attacked, he's scratched, everything, but he's able to fight off the zombies. And as he runs, he is shot by some of the other army guys and killed. Uh, Kenny and Pat listen to our DJ, and it becomes our final clip. With any luck, things will be back to normal now. This is Blue Heart on the second night of peace and tranquility. Dig on these immortal vibes, people. There is nothing more to fear. New horizons have opened up. Those of you listening to the sound of my voice know what I mean. This is now. 
the new world and the new cycle have begun. For everyone, this is the year zero. So there's lots of work to be done. I'll dedicate my next number to all of the undead around the world. And listen to it good. So it seems like Blue Heart is one of them now. What are we returning to? We're going to have to fight it. Kenny, we're going back to that? To fight? We're going back to win, where humanity's done for. Oh, Blue Heart, we hardly knew you. Yes, and he's all disgusted in his face, and then roll credits. All right, I think we should probably start with how we both saw this movie for the first time. Do it. Okay, this is my memory of it, of how you and I both watched it for the first time. You had taken Halloween off because of a hangover from the night before, and I had scheduled Halloween off when we worked together at a job where we were customer service reps. Does that sound about right? Yes. You had rented this movie to watch on Halloween and said, hey, I cut work. I knew you already took the day off. You want to come over and watch the zombie movie I rented with me? Real quick, that was back when blockbusters were still a thing. Yeah, and various other like video rental stores where you could get VHS tape. This is the but mo- I know I got it at Blockbuster because I spotted it. This is after you know we've gotten to know each other, hang out. I was literally walking through a Blockbuster, and li- it was they set up like a Halloween kind of area as Blockbusters had done. And it was right there, and I was like, "Well, fuck! I don't know if Court's ever heard of this. I'm gonna rent it because <laughs> we had just had a weekend where we all hung out and watched the other zombie film." <laughs> Yeah, it was like um, not too long before this. It was like it was on Halloween, but like a couple months before that, it was like the hottest day of the fucking year and your air conditioner in your apartment building, like the whole of the apartment building, the air conditioning was fucked. So you and another person that was staying with you at the time came over to my house because I had air conditioning and I subjected you guys to a whole shit ton of Fulci. Well, and I remember also not only did your apartment have really good air conditioning it it didn't have a lot of windows facing the summer sun yeah that's bad yeah yeah it was all it, 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 yeah it could get dark and so it stayed cool and i remember we brought over a case of beer and uh, i remember it was back when i still smoked cigarettes we came over with a case of beer and i, I had like three packs of cigarettes i'm like i'm not leaving until it is like midnight until before I go back to that fucking apartment. <laughs> yeah, or until one of your roommates texts you that everything fixed, right? That was that was it, the thing. It's, it's another thing. It was fucked up. It was a really nice apartment. It was like a nice apartment complex. So we paid extra to make sure that kind of shit didn't happen. <laughs> right. But anyway, this was a couple of months later and you kind of wanted to recreate it because you took the day off and you were going to Blockbuster anyway. So you got a hold of me and I'm like, yeah, let's fucking do it. So I met you at your apartment. You came back and you showed me this and you're like, hey, it's Fulci. It's Zombie 3. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, how is this Fulci? I was like, I've never even heard of this because at the time I hadn't. I didn't know that there was Zombie 3, 4, and 5 because this was like early 20 aughts, right? Like 2001, 2002. <laughs> yeah, like that's what surprised me. I thought you had heard of it before. Right. And so we. So I'm like, I'm like of course, Court's going to know what this is. And you took one look at it, one look at it and you're like, I've never seen this before. I'm like, holy fuck. All right. All right. So um, when I saw that uh, Bruno Mattei was involved with this after I had watched it, this ended up getting me to buy when they got released to DVD later, the Zombie 3, 4, and 5 box set from Shriek Show. And so this is what started the path of May Mate, Matt, was you renting this tape. You mean I caused May Mate? Indirectly, yeah. Because you got me interested in finding more of the zombie films, which got me into the Mate stuff. Because Mate did like 4 and I think he did After Death, which is Zombie 5. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure he did that one too. We just haven't be gotten a, there yet. <laughs> I'm going to be 100% honest. My 2001 was really fucked. And it keeps <laughs> fucking me somehow. All the way... <laughs> to 2020 <laughs> yeah i know it's fucking great but anyway fucking my 2001 started with 9 11 and fucking jesus <laughs> Well, this uh, this whole entire thing that we're talking about here, the, the whole entirety of the movie, all the stuff that we enjoyed, is pretty much all the stuff that I remember us commenting on as we were watching. We're like, hey, this is cool. And I remember the sequence in the gas or in the gas station where the advanced tool user zombies going at that chick with the uh, machete, like all over the place and trying to kill her. I remember being like really into that and being like, whoa, advanced tool user. And I just blurted those words out and you're like, ooh, I like that. And we've just used that yeah. term ever since. <laughs> yep, it's an advanced tool using zombie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because- They've gotten smarter. 
Yeah, because I think there's like a classification that they use in the animal kingdom for certain animals that um, start to use tools, like, you know, chimps and things like that will be advanced tool user type animals versus other types of not as developed animals that may not also use tools like sharp sticks or, you know, things to cut meat or whatever. So as soon as you saw a zombie grab a tool and like know how to use it and go after somebody, boom, advanced tool user. Yeah. Clever girl. (laughs) Clever girl. (laughs) But I mean, is this a good movie? No. Is this an enjoyable flick? Hell yes. Has this become the best of the three we've seen so far for Mae Mate? I'm going to say yeah. Um, Yes, it has. Yeah. Number one, it has. And number two, I will say this. Is it fun to watch as long as you're not going into it looking for a classic Fulci film? It's not a classic Fulci film as you would think of it. Right. And at that time, I was just discovering Fulci in the early 20 aughts. And it was really, well, not discovering Fulci, but like really discovering more expanded Fulci stuff. And it was really hard to get a hold of. Like I had to get tape trading stuff um, in like 98, 99 just to be able to get some of the movies. It just wasn't released here. I'd have to get somebody like to dub off their laser disc onto VHS for me, or I'd have to buy a boot of it. Um, so when this was actually available, uh, this was almost like a floodgate where a bunch of other stuff started getting released over here for Fulci stuff on VHS and even eventually DVD. And I mean, it's just really interesting to me the way that it unfolds because it's really, uh, his output is very uneven. There's a lot of stuff that's great. And then there's a lot of stuff where Fulci clearly just didn't give a fuck and was just making a movie to either get a paycheck or just to have something to do because you were bored. Um, the stuff in this film feels like he was trying even though he was getting frustrated and you can see where he kind of gave up or also his health was a problem for the making of this film. You can totally tell the stuff that's uh, Matei. So the interesting parts though are that Matei is bringing his A-game for most of this film and matching the level that Fulci had already set up. So Fulci's like Zed level not even trying movie making is essentially the equivalent of Matei's A-game. Well, and you can tell that this must be the best of the three because because we've gone over an hour actually talking about this film, unlike the other two, <laughs> which we were done like 35 minutes in. <laughs> right. I mean, we actually really had a lot of fun. There was a lot of stuff to comment on. There was some stuff to sink our teeth into. There were things that were poignant and actually pretty well put together. And even, I'm guessing, the finalization, but the writing or some of the ideas, even though that they were borrowed, this is probably some of the best writing that Fergassi and his wife have ever done. This is the people that are responsible for Troll 2, by the way. It, it, it probably also helps that some of this is actually topical to this day. Yeah, I mean, yes, that probably makes things resonate with me more. But even when we watched it in 2001-ish, I remember really liking these ideas and the way that the science and the military are butting heads. And I think we even commented that, you know, they were doing their due diligence for Romero type stuff. I think we even I referenced uh, the crazies to you and asked you if you'd seen it when we were talking about this and stuff like that. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. I mean, you definitely did. So, I mean, it's really interesting that uh, this film kind of got us on this path where we started talking more junk movies together, and it ended up essentially making this show happen many, many years later, and then also making May Matei happen for sure, because it's what got my interest in Matei, was I agree. you getting this film. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking, I can't believe I've done this. <laughs> so, uh, I just want to say, Matt, it's not my fault that May Matei exists, even though I keep bringing it back, even though I'm the one that makes the decisions, I take no responsibility for it, because you rented the tape. Yeah, listen, you keep doing that I'm going to pour lemonade all over this computer. <laughs> I thought you were going to threaten to pour lemonade all over me. And I was like, uh, from what I've heard, I like that sort of thing. <laughs> Real sticky. <laughs> <laughs> Only when it's in a Russian hotel, they got cameras everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's not wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's also way more gross than anything that happened in this movie, including the abortive arm smashing face sequence that I fucking love. And in high def was amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) No, this is an enjoyable film. It's not a good film, but it's an hour and 30 minutes of pure joy compared to the other two movies we've done for May Matei. So this one definitely branches way ahead of Women's Prison Massacre. And let's face it, the one thing that keeps us liking Women's Prison Massacre was Laura Jemsner anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. True. (laughs) So I kind of disagree with Matei himself whenever he says that he never made a good film and he feels that all of his films are bad in his opinion, which I did post that in the group. It was in an interview that's on this disc that was released from Severin. Um, He actually does say that he feels that all of his films are bad, in his opinion. He specifically Uh, said that in an interview, so the man himself admits he's a hack, pretty much. I mean, holy shit. Come on, man. 
but I, I, take it easy on yourself, poor guy. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I will submit to you, Matt, that when he gives a fuck and when he tries, Matei actually does make good duck occasionally. He can. Yeah, he could. I just don't think he wanted to try that hard. Yeah. Well, a stopped clock can be right twice a day, right? And Matei can make a couple sequences that are actually pretty fucking decent. We saw it in this film. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Enough hating on Matei, and it's time to hate on some psyop news. So we're gonna take the break here. We're going to play a promo for another podcast. I've decided to give a very big push for. Huh? Huh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I have a little bit more music that is straight out of Zombie 3's soundtrack, so everybody fucking cool. Everyone just be cool. No reason to get all fucking huffy-puffy about things, okay? And when we come back, we'll have some PSYOP news. Taste colors beyond any known spectrum as phonic euphoria cascades into your consciousness. Observe the laws of physics no longer applying to an existence that confines. Space and time will unravel and reform to a screaming new dawn, bursting with infinite possibility. It's as easy as listening to the Corrupted Youth Podcast, where the father-son duo of Dan and Brennan explore the latest blockbusters, classic genre films, and the schlockiest of Golden Age VHS rental store flicks in spoiler-heavy fashion. Corrupted Youth Podcast is available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and more. Take a break from reality, unlock your infinite cosmic potential, and become a dongle. Pretty good, spooky, synthy, zombie intro music for the film. I actually kind of dig this. I'm uh, hoping that the score has more to do with Fulci than with Matei, though. Yeah. <laughs> I want everything I like in the film to be Fulci and everything I disliked yeah. in the film to be Matei. Oh, give Matei a little bit. Yeah, and I feel bad because he's so hard on himself. <laughs> it's like, dude, you can't say you make bad films. Only we can say you make bad films. <laughs> yeah, he's taking all the fun out of it. It's like that yeah. rap battle with fucking Eminem in... Uh, Eight Mile, where he says all the shit that the other guy was going to do to make fun of him and takes all the thunder away. Yeah, right? <laughs> Tell these folks something they don't know about me, Matt, and give me some Scion news. Oh, let's come from our buddy, uh, Kurt Jensen. In, in Why the Rona is Gonna Beat Mankind, Forbes, injecting semen into your arm does not treat back pain, Kate shows. <laughs> oh, boy. Wait, you know what, though? My gum what? has a cure for cancer. OMG, a jizz drinking game. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, do you want the cure to cancer or not? Um, <laughs> but injecting, it's not gonna do you any fucking good, man. No, so. no, you're gonna have to take shots. Your cum will um, probably taste better. It, yeah, I think so. Uh, okay, so anyway, here is one way... To make your back pain, this is on Forbes. Here's one way to make your back pain seem less of a problem. Come in to me! Make another medical problem. The Irish Medical Journal included a case report of a 33-year-old male patient who was suffering from continuing severe lower back pain after lifting a heavy steel object. I started during doing the, drugs after that. Yeah, during the physical exam, his drug his doctor noticed a red swollen area in the patient's right upper arm. And I'm pretty sure the drug taste is just going to ruin the taste of man meat. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> 
Man, that was well typed. I couldn't decide. Was that you? Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, when the doctor questioned him about the area, the patient revealed that he was using an innovative method to treat back pain. In the words of the case report authors, what exactly was this innovation? Injecting his own semen into his own veins. Pulling yes, it his just semen. to pull it. Pulling yes, it just to pull it. Yes, injecting. Yes, into his veins. Yes, exclamation mark. Did he stick the needle down his pee hole? To inject, Lee? I don't think so, because it says in his vein, so... No, I mean, it already came out of there. That would have been useless. <laughs> right? <laughs> Your cum will probably taste better. Well, oh, you know, what so happens? Anyway, you know what happens, actually, Matt? Whenever you inject semen into your arm, do you know what happens? I don't know what happens. Blood jizz. Yeah, probably. Blood jizz. Uh, <laughs> so apparently, every month for 18 straight months, he had injected at least one dose of his semen using a hypodermic needle purchased online. This is like well, traces of death fucked to porno. Well, hypodermic needles, uh, uh, well, uh, well, hypodermic needles purchased online typically do not include warning, do not use to inject your own semen into your own veins. <laughs> That's a clip. Yeah. Uh, it is sort of implied. Most recently, he had given himself three semen doses into his veins and muscles. Pull out <laughs> and further degrade her by coming on her. <laughs> with your syringe filled with semen. Oh, that seems like a less fun way of doing that. Yes, so, you can't uh, have sex by sticking an erect penis into a vagina. Th- you do. You can't have sex that way. Man, that, that is just the worst hand job ever. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. Uh, it's not clear from the case report whether the patient had ever had sex head, but inside your arm is not where semen usually goes. Why are you coming in public swimming pools? <laughs> oh, am I going to get through this? Oh. Shoot some fucking ropes. <laughs> right up your veins, I guess. <laughs> right up your veins, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Dictionary.com does does define innovative as introduce something new or different. So yes, technically this was an innovative treatment because as as the case report related, no medical doctor had told them to do this. I think that's going to spank bank. Innovative doesn't necessarily mean it works or you should do it. It's going to cost you some serious cock. Or it won't end up in the hospital if you do this. Yeah, uh, like, I want to know why he decided that was a good idea to inject his own semen and create blood jizz. I don't, I don't know. Um, according to the case report, the area on the patient's arm had become firm and hard. <laughs> OMG, a jizz drinking game. Shut up. Are you talking about penises? Uh, after he had failed multiple attempts at injecting the bodily fluid, causing an ex- extravation of semen into the soft tissue. It's going to uh, cost you some serious cock. In other words, he kept missing his veins so that the semen had been leaking into the body tissue around the vein, causing a collection of fluids surrounded by angry inflammation. Oh, he's looking indeed, for Wang. Indeed, inflammation can be your body's way of saying, dude, what the heck are you doing? And I'm going to fuck it to death. My body, that is. Yeah. Uh, anyway, lab test found signs of surprise, surprise, and infection. That's what tends to happen when you inject semen into your arm using a hypodermic needle purchased online. Well, that there, and it's not sterile stuff you are injecting injecting into your body and if you didn't sterilize the injection point that's going to get infected too ask any fucking heroin addict for christ's sake how do you know so much about it uh prison okay anyway <laughs> america's a bunch of cunts um so during the patient's hospital stay his back pain did improve thus in a very roundabout way the semen injections did eventually lead to his back pain getting better <laughs> however this by no means should suggest that injecting semen into your arm I'm sorry. His back cake got better because they actually treated the problem and they had to take care of the semen issue with him injecting himself. Listen, <laughs> no one's coming right out and saying it, and it's making me a little mad, but uh, this is the internet. This is what the, the internet did this. That the cocky guy shit's like on the metal. I mean, start listening to doctors, not the internet. Yes, you can't have sex by sticking an erect penis into a vagina. Why are you what, coming in public swimming pools? What are you, been on the fucking WebMD website? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's how that happens. Bathe in the blood of virgins? Oh, that's weird. So anyway, um... So, uh, plus, it wasn't clear how permanent that improvement in his back pain was. The patient did eventually discharge himself from the hospital before getting all the proper treatments, such as a procedure to drain the fluid collection in his arm. I'm already getting arrested. I might as well grab this guy's dick. If this seems to you like a very unusual case, <sighs> you're right. 
bad pun, but I'm jealous that they thought of it before me. <laughs> yeah. The case report authors couldn't find a match for any anything on human semen injections for back pain or any medical condition when they searched pub and PubMed, Embase, Google Scholar, and the internet. So, okay, I don't know where this guy got this idea then, because if it's not on the internet before this, holy I, shit. I have an idea where he may have gotten this from. Oh, yeah, where? The QAnon folks, or the oh. other white supremacists, like, stuff that is hidden and not available through those kind searches because they're being platformed. Yeah, this, you're probably This right. sounds like a bleach drinking solution horse shit that those kind of folks would come up with. Okay, listen... If 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 one of those folks somehow stumbles upon this fucking show, don't inject semen into yourself to cure COVID nineteen because it won't happen. Wait, why are you trying to help out someone like that's into because, Kunan stuff, man? Because those assholes would also be the first to try to sue us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then put up a GoFundMe and try and blame us for all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna—they're gonna set up a GoFundMe to get their lawyers so they can sue us. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Uh, Don't do that; it won't help. Also, just yeah. because you watched Human Centipede doesn't mean that you can make your own Human Centipede like in Human Centipede Two. So you should just skip right to Human Centipede Two because it'll work about as well as it did in Human Centipede Two. The fuck was that about? <laughs> did you just watch Human Centipede? No, I saw that like years ago. But two right. is two is better, and I'm just trying to a get people to just skip right to two, and b not try and make yourself a human has centipede. Yeah. Well. All right. Well, there you go. Good. Good thinking. <laughs> uh, it's about as medically accurate as whatever reason this guy came up with for fucking jerking off into a syringe and shooting it up. Clip. <laughs> anyway, so. Dude shot semen into himself to fix his back pain, and it didn't fix it, surprisingly. So don't fucking do that. I mean, they're lesbian vampires. Why would they want to put their teeth in man meat? All blowjobs should be teethy. <laughs> well, th- that part one of that is right. Part two is not. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, man. All yeah, blowjobs that- should be teethy. That's that's just what Black Love was showing us in that movie. <laughs> I'm glad that that's the one that you remember where it came from. But when I play you other clips, you're like, when did I say that? Because it was visual. So I actually saw that teethy blowjob. So we're going to be pushing the Christian agenda right down your fucking throat. All blowjobs should be teethy. Listen, when you see a teethy blowjob, that shit sticks with you. Yeah, probably. (laughs) (laughs) And true. (laughs) Well, this may be the actual longest Maymate that we have recorded yet, but let's do one more because the folks were really good at finding stories for us so all right hold on one sec all right this one comes from alan mcpherson that is chef al what's up dude anyway he uh arkansas woman arrested for wearing bag of meth as her hair bow (laughs) i knew you were gonna grab this for two reasons one meth two (laughs) arkansas yeah. So anyway, Jessica Crop was arrested due to having five outstanding warrants when the officer noticed she was wearing a bow in her hair and it was made of meth. Jessica Crop, 38, was arrested on September 24th after flipping city police officer who pulled her over found that she had five outstanding warrants for arrest. All cops are bumbling dummies. To help the police, the, I'm going to stockpile my guns because cops don't help you. According to the affidavit, the arrested officer pulled Crop over for driving with expired tags. Crop noticed the officer that was uh, uh, that it was was that crap 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 notified i was on that crap (laughs) notified the officer that it was not her car and also that her license was suspended you can't pay your bail well i could probably fix that for a blowy the officer ran crop's name through the system and proceeded to arrest her after there wasn't only a confirmation of the suspended license but five active warrants as well it's gonna cost you some serious cock there was a failure to appear warrant out of flipping Two failure to appear warrants out of Marion County, one failure to appear warrant out of Mountain Home, and a non-payment of a fine warrant out of Cotter. So she's the invisible woman because she refuses to appear. America is a bunch of cunts. Pretty much. So according to court documents, the officer said, are you serious? Once he noticed a small plastic bag full of what appeared to be meth fashioned as a bow in Crop's hair. She I said, have what? a ragey direction. Just for the meth, not for the bow. The officer said, you have a bow in your hair made of a bag of meth. Not in shape, but I don't know how to perform an abortion. She said, shit, didn't know that was there, what well, was here. Someone else put that there, and I don't know what it was. That's my fetish. 
So Krop was also found uh, with other various drug paraphernalia and allegedly cooperated with the police. Because she was it's arrested. super hot, you should be able to fuck one time. <laughs> well, this is Arkansas. Yeah. She was arrested for possession of methamphetamine or cocaine with the purpose to deliver. God, possession doesn't see when you do anal? <laughs> possession of drug paraphernalia, driving on suspended driver's license, and no liability insurance. Her bond was set at $20,000. You can't pay your bail? Well, I could probably fix that for a blowy. <laughs> I think we've done this story before. I think might, I think in September when it was handed out, because I remember the bow tie of meth, but fuck if it's still not funny now. It's still fucking hilarious. <laughs> especially especially your excuse. What? Oh, I didn't know that was there. And if it was there, I don't know who put it there. And I don't know who put it there. And I don't even know what said it. So there you go. It's all three things, man. <laughs> I have no idea who put stuff on my body because I don't groom myself. She literally took the, the shaggy excuse right there. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, whatever you think happened didn't happen. And if it did happen, then it wasn't me. And if it was me, it was because I didn't know that it was there. And if it was there, it's because I didn't put it there. Are you gaslighting me? <laughs> I mean, I would be, but how could I ever fool someone as smart as you? Wait a minute. <laughs> let's move on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's let's just pull the chain on this. I think we're good enough for now. You're starting to fuck with me here. <laughs> <laughs> and with that note, Matt is super confused and just wants to declare for everybody. All blowjobs should be teethy. We're going to play. No, they, they shouldn't, though. Don't do that. Because people will sue. Uh, I'm already getting arrested. I might as well grab this guy's dick. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to play the ending Legion promo. We're going to have a little bit more music that's straight out of the soundtrack of Zombie 3. And when we come back, we will close out this crazy ass over halfway done of Mamate show. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network like Cinema Psyops, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Mean Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Go Show. Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. Kind of cool, actually. A little bit shocking. So, The Sound of Fear is the name of that song. And uh, I was digging it way more than I probably should even admit. <laughs> yeah! I'm right, yeah! <laughs> I don't know. I have a soft spot for over-singing 80s tune. Like, I think that's why I enjoyed parts of Night Train to Terror as much as I did. Yeah. Because I, oh, I want everyone go. to dance with me, dance with me. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I got that removed from the console, man. That took some serious virus software. No shit, right? <laughs> Holy fuck, that was just infectious. <laughs> Speaking of infectious, the main way to catch the disease that is Cinema PsyOps is our landing and launching page. LegionPodcast.com forward slash Cinema dash PsyOps. I realize in this post 
COVID-19 world, that uh, type of phrasing is probably very hurtful for everyone, and I apologize, but that's the best that I could come up with at the time. Yes, and that just has to happen. They're fine, you're, but your your culture is canceled. <laughs> okay, well, my culture is your prom dress. Fuck, <laughs> now my prom dress is canceled. <laughs> Well, if you would like to cancel our culture and or turn our culture into your prom dress, we would like pics of that on our Facebook group, Cinema Psyop. Yeah, yeah, we need some that premium, some premium memes, some, uh, just the highest of qualities. You know what? We got some really good ones. Did you see the Friends one? I think I uh, did. I loved it. It was great. Uh, Darren Stupendous. made one that just Darren made one that said psyops, and then he gave us like a punk cover of the Friends theme, which was fucking hilarious to play and look at the photo. And yeah, I did nice. that. Um, and then I think our boy Ken, aka Mystique, in the group actually made one where he put my head on all the Friends, and it was vomitous. Yeah. Oh no, I love that was the one I love. That's. <laughs> That's perfection right there. That's exactly what you wanted, yeah. That is that is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Well, if you would like to find out more about what Matt exactly wants, you can find him on Facebook as Matt Psyop, and he's on there more and more frequently. I am also I am. on Facebook posting just about everything that I am watching, listening to, or reading, or what have you. I mean, I finish an article, I share it right to the Facebook, so you can find me there as Court Psyops as well. You can email feedback to Matt, psyopmatt at gmail.com. You can also send him your Psyop news directly there. You can also send him nude selfies, but make sure you're of age before you do that. Please and thank you. You can e- but you can still send them. <laughs> you can email feedback to court, cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. I would request that you send me all of the nudes you are going to send to Matt and that you are definitely of age before you send them. Yes. Yes. Send them to us both. We we both need this. <laughs> send me your nudes. <laughs> Don't fucking hold out. <laughs> <laughs> You're sharing them with each other in that group anyway. You're leaving us out. Out in the cold, I tell you. Out in the cold. Or, you know, just email us photos of, I don't know, cute cats or some shit. Like, cheer us up here, man. We're I don't know. I I just, I'm, I'm under the impression that the PSYOP fan base has large orgy, orgies and we're the two nerds they don't invite. <laughs> I just think that's the thing. I think that's what's going on, um, if I had to guess. Not a thing. Yeah. Not a thing? Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. That makes me feel better, because I would have felt left out. I don't know about you. That's not a thing. I will say this. If I get invited to the orgy, I'm still not telling you. No, I know. Well, I, I was almost willing to pet that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a thing. <laughs> yeah, me not inviting Matt to orgies? It's a thing. <laughs> that is... That is definitely a thing. You could tweet a couple of tweets to a couple of twats who beg for orgies and nude photos on the hate-filled shitfest that is Twitter telling us to cancel our culture, which is our prom dress. Yes. I'm at court underscore psyop after that long goddamn fucking talk, and he is at <laughs> psyop Matt. I'm also available on Instagram as cinema underscore psyops, where I am repurposing our memes. I'm not stealing your memes, folks. I am repurposing our memes. They belong to the people now. Now. They're all of our memes, all for all. Yeah, I'm willing to share them after I'm done with them for all of you to share as well. They're our yeah. memes. They're not your memes that I steal. I am repurposing our memes. Yes, there you go. Congratulations. <laughs> that's that's socialism. Cinema <laughs> underscore psyops, the socialist meme factory. <laughs> well, while you're out there trying to survive this very personal apocalypse, whether it be zombie, COVID-19, or anything else, kick the fuck out of the fuckers that are trying to take your life and this week and make it your bitch. I don't wanna go in the sick place I feel the sounding bad I don't wanna say what I'm feeling And I think I don't wanna stay in the smoking light It's just a sound of my brain I feel like your presence They are here It is recording right now. Oh, you're already running? I'm running now. I'm recording. All right, give me the three, two, one clap. Uh, you know what, though? Hold on. Delete. Because things changed up, hold on. Okay. Blue snowball. Down to here.
the original zombie film, which, yes, yeah, Zombie 2, yeah. is a fucking excellent film. It's a fucking masterpiece zombie film, and I'll yeah. fight anyone who tries to tell me otherwise. <laughs> you don't have to fight me, because you know how I feel about it, and it has, it has the thing that makes me cringe the most. Yeah, yeah, ocular penetration is the thing that you can't handle. Now, if you can get I, food play and ocular penetration, instant vomit for Matt. Yeah, that shit would, I, I'll, uh... And then also uh, Trump talking about abortions. I'll I'll fucking just retch everywhere. <laughs> yeah, we're we're not gonna do that, and I'm not even gonna play the clip because I don't even want to hear this asshole's voice this week. So we're thank you. You're safe for once. Ha ha. All right, and then um, so then back at the resort, a couple decides to go looking for food. God damn it! Hold on. Sorry about that. Work was calling. Okay. And that is our next clip. This is five, right? Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure because I was not deleting them as we go. Three, two, one. Why do I care if poor people are dying as long as it doesn't come near me or the billionaires that can afford to protect themselves? Let them eat coronavirus cake. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's a pretty dead on impression. Good job. Let's get you a fake tan. Um, <laughs> uh, no, and no, and I threw up a little in my mouth just doing that good of an impression. God damn it. See, you ruin everything. All right, so <laughs> it's fine, Matt. I'll do all the Trump impressions from here on out. Then I guess. Perfect. Wait, how so, did I cause... inherit the passive aggressive hero shit? I, I'm so confused. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is Mae Matei doing to me? And you can see how bad of a son I am because I just moved along right away. That's great. Thanks, man. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> always be you doing that all the time. That's what this whole show is based on. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, let me show you dancing. We are here. Do not use to inject your own semen into your own veins. Fucking jerking off into a syringe and shooting it up. Listen, when you see a teethy blowjob, that shit sticks with you. And make it your bitch. All right, I'm out and I'm paused. All right, so send me that file as soon as you can, and we will be on our way to the other hell for next week. All right, sounds good. We'll talk to you later, man. Yep, later, dude. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.